Hi and welcome. Today is the last part of my series of linear finite element theory. Today I'm going to put everything together and solve for the displacements based on the stiffness matrices that we derived last time. So let's start with the principle of virtual work for one element. This is what we talked about a number of times now in this series. We have the internal virtual work and the external virtual work. And we already, in the previous um, video, I talked about this first term in green here, and we simplified that in a very nice way. Today, let's start with the blue term here. This is a body force term, and uh, we can rewrite this in a better way by using this equation for the displacement field based on the nodal displacement that we talked about in one of my earlier videos. And we can go through and show that then it is given by this equation here. So if we put all of these parts together, we end up with the equation that's shown at the bottom here. So this equation on the left is what we had in the previous video. And now, using the same technique, we can uh, get these equations here. We convert the integrals using um, this summation of weight factors that we introduced last time. And what's really interesting and what makes this so cool is that this, this hypothetical displacement field, the U, is everywhere and we can cancel it out. It goes away and we get this matrix equation we can directly solve using a, a, a computer. Once we uh, add all of these things together, this on the left becomes a, a large matrix and this is the displacements which are unknown on the right are forces or force-like terms. So for the whole body, we add them all together and we then get the complete equation, which is something similar to K is stiffness times the displacement is equal to uh, the force term. So that's how it works. And that is how the, uh, the finite element method is set up. So if I go back now to the first uh, Python function on the Python code that I wrote some time ago, um, we can see how these uh, code terms come from the equations we derived. So the first here, this section here, is the shape functions, and here are the equations that we introduced. These are the gradients of the shape functions, which is the derivatives of these, so it's very simple. And the next portion here is the creating the mesh. So this is a problem-specific portion, and it sets everything up in this way and has a connectivity matrix that we will use uh, later. Next one is to specify the material, and we need to have the C matrix, which we derived uh, as shown here, E and nu the uh, Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. This is for plane strain. If you have plane stress axisymmetric, you, there will be a slightly different form of this. But this is how the C matrix is uh, calculated in Python here. The next portion is the key portion in some sense. It's the, the stiffness matrix that we need to calculate. The first part of this is um, the weight factors. You see, they're calculated at the xi and eta are calculated as shown down here. So it's a very precise, concise way of doing it. And then we have this loop over all the elements. First here, we assign space for them. It's an eight by eight matrix, the Ke uh, matrix. And then we go through each integration point and we calculate the B matrix, which is given by this uh, form here. So this will also showed in one of my earlier videos uh, where these terms come from. And uh, in Python, you can do this in a kind of a, a tricky but clever way. When you have a colon colon inside this uh, construct here, it, be, be, it means it's every second term. So we assign every second term using this uh, strategy here. It's just a clever way to do it in short amount of code. And that comes from this equation here. And then the key Ke matrix is from this that we derived last time. It's the B transpose CB, here it is. And then multiply that by the determinant J. The, the weight factor of W is one as we talked about last time. And then we have to take this element stiffness matrix and put it into the global stiffness matrix. We have more than one element typically. So we need to assign the, the stiffness terms into the corresponding terms in the uh, global stiffness matrix. And that we do in this way here. It's also somewhat clever the way this is done is using an enumerate statement in Python to convert from the local uh, IJ position to the global in the uh, global stiffness matrix. So think a little bit about that. You can see that that's in fact the way you should do it. The next section here is the boundary conditions. So this is again problem specific. In this case, in my example, 
I have only uh, displacement boundary conditions. And I assign them here. I say which nodes should have zero uh, in there and which should have the displacement that we prescribe. And then the final statement, like the, all of the math that goes in is here, is NP linear algebra solved. So this solves this, uh, it could be a tremendously large matrix. We're using Python here, so we use one of the uh, NumPy built-in solvers, nothing particular fancy, this works particularly, it works fine for, for this example, of course. But there are a lot of theories again here that people uh, use to make this run even faster. Uh, when you have uh, millions of degrees of freedom, for example. And the last portion is just plotting the results. So I hope you've seen now how this actually works, how you can cancel out the virtual displacement and you get a matrix equation that you can solve very quickly and elegantly. And uh, it really isn't that hard. And, but what's good about this, I think, is that it gives you flavor for how this can be done, what's going on behind the scenes. It also gives you an insight into how important it is um, to have fine uh, mesh in your run a finite element simulation. If the mesh is coarse, you don't get good results. We can see that from these kind of uh, equations here as well. So take a look at this, go through it in your own pace if you're interested. I, I think this is a, an interesting example for how this works. And if you have any questions, you can ask them below.